Welcome to uh, this presentation that I've named Data and its Organization. So I shortly touched on the topic of, of data and what data is and when I did the overview of the process from world of discourse to target audience. Um, what I'll be doing in this presentation, I'll go into more detail about which aspects of data are important to work, understand and, and what limitations does data itself carry with us and how is it organized and how do we reorganize it so it fits best into our needs. So first of all, what is data? And again, I have mentioned it in another presentation that I use this definition that data is a symbolic representation of information. So therefore, data stores information and information can be extracted from data. Um, there is an extended theory we're talking about, the knowledge triangle, where it builds upon that we have data and then from data comes information, information comes knowledge, and from knowledge comes wisdom. Um, and yeah, it's probably useful in some context. We won't, I won't go into it. And you know, just remember that when you type, start thinking that way, that's also quite a lot of things such as misinformation. So, you know, when you work with data, always ask yourself, hmm, has someone a specific interest in presenting the data as it is? Is it, can I trust this data or does it have some underlying interest in it? So, how does data represent information? Well, typically, if you can think of it in this way, that um, data is used to represent information like we have some values. And um, so 27 or 5 or whatever. So the, the, these values, they define the properties, so the state of a property of entities. So um, you could talk about the property the highest completed education for person, someone, is that they have a master degree. So master degree, that's the value. The person, person one, I'm not, I'll call them this slide, is our entity. Entity just means the thing that we're interested in. And, um, and the highest completed education that's a property so property could be income it could be sex or gender it could be height or whatever um, so that's the basic form so um, now one could be for gender said person one is a female um, and um, there's some in this specifically in this case there's some things that we um, we should uh, be cautious about, namely that when it comes to spatial locations, um, then um, our location becomes an entity. Okay, so we have elevation as um, as our, um, to be precise, elevation in meters above sea level. That's a property we're interested in. The location, that's our entity. So some latitude and longitude, and in this case. 35 meters is um, the value of that property. Okay, so in specifically when we talk about spatial data, then locations also often appear as entities. The classical way of, of representing data is of course in the tabular form. So we have um, about each row represents a Entity, so person one is a female, has a, um, a ma master program. Person two is also a female, has a PhD, has a highest completed, and person three is a male with a master program. Okay, so that that's the classical way of well, presented data. Um, we'll come back to that in, um, in in a short while. We now start and look at different types of data. Start with data, and again, I have talked briefly about it in a previous video. So, we distinguish between our atomic data, so unbreakable data that is considered as one element, and then our complex data, 
or unstructured data, domain data, whatever you call them, um, where we have um, photographs and geographic data and things like all in that area. But let's stick with our atomic data. So again there, we'll distinguish between categorical data, so data describing categories, so church, school, petrol station, things like that, countries, motor road, road types, and we have quantities, so those measures, things we can measure, so 55 meters above sea level. The, um, our categories can be subdivided into the ordinal ones, so the ones that have the order in it, that the motor road is more than a dirt track, or capital is more than a village, and our nominal ones, those that do not have any ordering in it. So um, we have a, a church and a school and so on. Um, our quantities are normally distinguished between as interval data and ratio data. The only difference is how we compare them. Uh, ratio data, they have a absolute zero. So we can talk about something being double as much. Um, it does make sense to say that <clears throat> if the temperature outside goes from 10 to 20 degrees, it's not as double as warm because the zero, at least if you're talking about degrees centigrade, is not a absolute. Um, if you've been talking about temperature in Kelvin, then there was an absolute zero. But normally if centigrade or Fahrenheit, there's not an absolute zero and it does not make sense to talk about going from 10 to 20 is double as warm. Um, going back to our complex data or domain data, um, we either have to distinguish between what we call structured data, so most spatial data is in their nature structured, so they have some form of ordering we use. We need a domain software, a geographic information system or a spatially enabled software that can understand that structure. That be what they be. And then we have the group that is these unstructured data. Unstructured data are really difficult to understand. They normally need human interpolation. So an example. Um, so um, one of my uh, favorite photograph or series, Cardiff After Dark, um, which talks about night nightlife in, in, in Cardiff. Um, this type of picture, yeah, well, we can, the co in the computer it consists of a red, a green and a blue band and they have bits and bytes, but that doesn't tell us anything about the picture. You know, if we want to see what's going on, what information is that picture handing us, then that is unstructured. We all, we'll need a human interpolation to see what is going on. It will, it will, it will probably go be some time before we can have automatic computer programs analyze pictures like this and tell us what is the essence of this picture. So that's what I mean by unstructured. So photographs, literature, things like that is, is unstructured. Not because that it's data storage, that's structured, but it's interpretation of them that's unstructured. Good. Um, I mentioned that things to look out for. One of the things we have to be aware of is is a time present in our data set. So the interesting thing about time is that entities can change their property value. So people can, if we looked at a person in year 2010, maybe their highest education achieved was a bachelor and then we looked at them in 2015 and then maybe the highest achieved educational level was a master's. So time allows entities to change their property value. That makes it special. And um, time can be considered in, in many different ways. Um, this one we have a uh, time considered a continuum I've plotted in um, how m many um, of the ma persons have the main subjects of masters um, as a function of time, but time can also be seen as categories. So 
in this case we're looking at specific years and how the same different categories of education are depicted so time is a bit special it can both be a continuous so something that is a measure and a category um, so time is something to be aware of the other thing that is special of course is our spatial data spatial data um, when represented is represented as complex data there's some rules for how we can extract the bits and bytes that represent the spatial data so that way, in that way it's complex but when we look at analytically we can look at it different ways we can look at it as categories so in this case here I have uh, made a, a chart showing um, um, how many people have a master's uh, degree as a function of uh, how many, big the workforce is in different regions so each color is a different region so there I'm looking at the spatial data as categories I have also in this data set included um, the year as my symbol um, so time is in this case also appearing as categories I can look at space as a country, uh, quantitative data so a continuum so in this case um, I have a plot of, um, of, uh, of mean temperature for a period compared to another period um, and here we are just looking at different coordinates so our space is this grid of coordinates so we are, here we are looking at space as latitudes and longitudes as quantities and finally we often look at or have this problem of hmm, can I describe different, the road layout of different times how can I relate the road layout of in this case Copenhagen to the road layout in New York or London or whatever so in that case it's unstructured data we will probably have to use advanced algorithms to extract information about that structure that is inlaid in this image of how the roads are laid out um, spatial data is also different from our process we have, it has its own operators we can talk about neighbors I mean there's not many other data sets where, where we're talking about neighbors is, is meaningful uh, and it has some really special limitations um, when we do visualizations yeah the x and y dimension of our visualization is taken by space that, what that means is of course that's what naturally that's when we make a map but it means that as we'll talk about later that location in space is one of the most powerful components of a visualization so if we can't do things like this where we plotted in this case uh, the dominant gender of different educations so we see mechanics they are all male and so on but here we're using the x-axis to show how dominant the most dominant gender is within the, each education so just an example of that when we are using spatial data we can't do things like this because that the x and y coordinates are used for the spatial data um, basically um, a, um, we can talk about um, three types of spatial data it's a bit simplistic there's many more um, but let's stick with these three the most common way of looking at it